Hi there. Welcome to the Schwoven's Nest. My name is Sandra. Today I have a brand new episode of Timber Tuesday where I mostly use wood for my DIYs. In the fall, I grabbed a couple of these Dollar Tree signs with the little pumpkin cutout. They're really cute the way they are, but I'm not going to be using the pumpkin today, so I'm just going to use my utility knife and cut that portion away. Next, I'm going to measure how far down I want my angles to be. I'm going to create a picket fence stake out of this. Once I have the angle where I want it to be, again, I'll just use my utility knife and cut it down. Using a sanding block, I'm going to round out these edges. I want the corners to be a little bit more distressed looking and not so perfect. And then I'll just give it a little bit of sanding all the way around. I'm going to use two of these little Dollar Tree crates and I'm going to glue them together. So I'm just going to add some hot glue to the one top here and then I'll just put the other one on top and glue them together really well. I'm not putting any glue at the front because I don't want it to seep out. I'm just going to hold them together until the glue sets and then get rid of any excess glue. I'm just going to use hot glue to glue the crates to the bottom of the sign. I'm going to paint everything white and I'm just using my DIY chalk paint which is some latex paint and talc. If you're looking for that recipe I've got it down in my description box along with a link to Amazon for some talc. While I waited for the paint to dry I went over to my Cricut Joy and I cut out a stencil just using some cardstock of a windmill. Now this is something that you could definitely do without a Cricut and I will have the free printable available on my website. I've decided for 2022 to embrace some different colors. I've always been using white and black and grays and I thought I would just try changing it up a little bit. I'm still using the white as my backdrop but I decided to use this clay color from Martha Stewart Vintage Chalk Paints and it kind of looks like mud <laughs> but I really like the color so I thought I would just use my makeup sponge and just dab it on. I'm not giving it full coverage. I want it to be kind of variegated in the amount of color that's on there and have some lighter spots and some darker spots. For the legs of the windmill, I just cut out a strip of paper from the cardstock about a quarter of an inch wide. And again, I'm just using the, my makeup sponge and I'm just going to have them on an angle. I'll do three kind of pointing in towards the windmill and then one down the center. To add more dimension and character to the windmill, I'm going to use this silver permanent marker and just draw a line on one side of the blade all the way around. I'll also do this for the legs down at the bottom. Everything's completely dry now, so I'm going to do some distressing. I'm using a little chip brush that I got at a dollar store and the same clay color. And I'm just coming in from each of the corners and giving it a little bit of distressing. You can see how it just kind of feathers in from the edge. Then I'm going to just go across each of the slats and add a little bit more distressing there as well. I'm also going to do both sides of the crate the exact same way. Then I'm going to move on to the top part of the sign. Using the same technique, I've just got some paint on my brush and I'm pulling it in from the back of the sign. And that's just going to give me a little bit more distressing around the edge and kind of frame out the sign, give it a little bit more dimension. I'm going to do that for this side and then I'm going to turn it around and do it on the other side as well. Now I'm going to very lightly go across the sign. I do want some distressing, but I don't want it to be very heavy. When you're distressing, sometimes less is more and it's always better to start off with a light touch. You can always add some more paint and go over it a second and third time until you achieve the look you want. Lastly, I took a little bit of white on the brush and I'm just going over the same 
side as I did the silver. I just want to add a little bit more dimension and shadowing to the windmill blades just to help them look more three-dimensional. The legs of the windmill looked a little bit well off so I decided just to take the other end of the makeup sponge dunk it into some of the paint and then dab some of it off and I'm just going on an angle it's really hard to see how I'm doing it but you can see the effect of it here sorry my hand keeps getting in the way I'm going to add some florals to the crate and I'm just going to use two pieces of styrofoam. I am not gluing them in because then if I ever want to change this out, it'll be really easy just to pull out that styrofoam or pull out the florals themselves and do something completely different. I am using lavender. I am so happy that Christmas is over. I loved sharing all of the Christmas ideas, but I love my lavender and I'm so excited to be using more of my farmhouse style again. I'm just trimming off some of these branches and then I'm going to be adding a little bit of Spanish moss, which is also from the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to put that down onto the bottom of the styrofoam first, just using a little bit of hot glue to hold it in place. I'm just going to start placing the lavender in straight up and down. I'm going to do a row at the back. I think I put four in at the back and then a few more in the front, kind of staggering them, staggering some of the heights as well to make it look as natural as possible. The last thing I'm going to do to this crate design is to add a little bit of this ticking stripe ribbon. It has sort of the same stripe color as the clay and I thought it would be a really nice match. I'm going to glue it starting on the side here along the front and then down the other side. I made a really cute two fingered bow. I've got some tails that I dovetailed and I'm going to glue that right into the center. If you have been following me on my channel, you know that I am not a bow fan. I am also not a good bow maker, but I found this tutorial online to make a two fingered bow and look at how cute it is. This is the only way I'm gonna be making my bows from this point forward. If you're interested in learning how to make one of these bows, I'm going to be posting a video probably in the next day or two. So make sure your notification bell is on so you you don't miss out on that tutorial. If you are new to my channel, I would love it if you could hit that red subscribe button, especially if you like what you see. This next project is using an 8x10 Dollar Tree canvas frame. I'm going to use my screwdriver and my needle nose pliers to pull out all of the staples and remove the canvas. These canvases are pretty rough, so I'm just going to take some fine grit sandpaper and just sand down all of the little rough edges, especially around the corners. I don't want to get any splinters from this. Some of the frames have staples in them, but I noticed on this one it didn't. It just had two sort of finger jointed corners. And so what I did is just push them together and added a little bit of hot glue inside the holes on the inside of the frame to hold them in place and make sure that they didn't wiggle and fall apart. I'm measuring how long I'm going to need these half inch square wooden dowels that I have. I'm going to need to cut them down just a little bit and then I'm going to put the long one right in the center of the frame and make a window out of it. I'm going to then take a second one, measure that one, cut it down to size and then do the two pieces in the center. If you're enjoying my DIYs, I would love it if you could hit the like button. That gets me noticed a lot more on YouTube. Once I have the pieces wedged in, I'm just going to take a regular size popsicle stick, cut it down to size and use some hot glue to just 
make sure that it doesn't pop out. So the popsicle stick will just go over the frame on the outside, the inside dowel, and then the little piece in the center. Now that I've got it all assembled, it's time to paint. And I'm using my signature white, of course. <laughs> but anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and give this two really good coats. I'm also going to paint the back just with one coat. And what I like about my DIY chalk paint and any chalk paint for that matter, is it will cover up any of those little holes. So those holes from the staple gun, when I put my second coat of chalk paint in there, that's just going to fill up and you won't even notice them. I've got a three inch little grapevine wreath here. I did make it out of some vine, so that's why there's a little bit of twine on there. I had to use something to hold it together, but you won't even notice the twine when it's complete. This is a piece of boxwood. This is a branch that I got from Amazon and I do have that listed down in my description box. It's my favorite boxwood to use. It's a little on the shiny side but I love the dark green down at the bottom and the lighter green up top. I'm going to be pulling off all of the little stems because I'm going to need to trim them down a little bit to make sure that they fit this little wreath. If you've seen me make wreaths before, you'll know that I like going all in one direction. So I'm going to start at the bottom and hot glue the first branch on, and then I'm just going to continue my way all the way around until I get back to the beginning. I'm going to take the next set of branches and cut them in half. So I have three on each stem. I'll use these pieces to start filling in the gaps. And I always like to start with the larger leaves first and then use the smaller ones to fill in at the end. So now I'll be filling in using the lighter stems and I'm gonna put these kind of where the darker ones are and just make it look it doesn't even have to be evenly spaced all the way around. It just has to look pleasing to your eye. I made another two finger bow using some two and a half inch buffalo check ribbon. I folded it in half and it is wired. Now I'm gonna take a chenille stem and push it through the loop at the back. So that gives me the ability to twist it onto the wreath. I'm going to wrap the chenille stem around the wreath and then twist it really well in the back and then just fold the ends over. This is also going to allow me to change out the color of the bow or the style of the bow for the seasons if I want to. To distress this window, I am going back to my black because I just really love that look. I'm going to use a little piece of paper to dab off my paint, again, just using a little chip brush dunking it in the paint, getting rid of some of the excess, and then just brushing it along my window just the same way that I did for my first windmill sign. YouTube has a great way of letting you know when I upload something new. That notification bell is your ticket to seeing my videos. To hang this little window, you could use whatever you wanted. You could put a sawtooth hanger on the back. I decided just to take some more of my buffalo check ribbon. I folded it in half this time, and I'm just going to hot glue it onto the back of the frame, making sure that my loop isn't too long and making sure that it folds over nicely when I glue it onto the other side. I'm going to use another chenille stem to hang the wreath on the window. I'm just going to feed it through a couple of the little branches as you see me doing here. I'm going to twist it once and then I'm going to change the direction so I can easily put it onto the window frame. Again, this will give me the ability to change the wreath out for the seasons if I choose to.
If you're still with me, thank you so much for watching to the end. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, hit the like button, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my future projects. Thanks again. See you in the next one.